it's great to have you with us, Tom. Can you just share where you were with your hockey as a 12-year-old? Yeah, so when I was 12, uh, I was playing at a club called Chapel Town. Uh, it was my was my sort of local team in Sheffield. Uh, playing just just junior hockey, uh, like on, on a Sunday, as, as most people sort of do. Uh, and like sort of like trying to think about men's hockey a little bit because obviously I think at that point I don't think you're allowed to play men's hockey until I think it was 13 so just sort of playing junior hockey my local club sort of small club in Sheffield um, yeah that's that's where I was at and were you playing any of the sports as well? yeah so I was big my, my kind of thing was um, hockey in the winter cricket in the summer that was like my I, I had a really good like local cricket club as well I mean, but as a kid, played played all sorts of sports. Played a bit of water polo, like classic, like swimming and things like that. But cr- cricket and hockey were the, the the main two for me. Yeah. Sure. And do you remember like your first county trial? That's about the age that happened. Yeah. So, sort of. Yeah. It's. I don't. I didn't particularly do too much. It's got sort of um, representational stuff as a kid. Um, just wasn't particularly like good at hockey well I mean I think I did some South Yorkshire stuff but I um, didn't really do too much I think I maybe played a couple of games for the Yorkshire team but not nothing like too too major really never never like massively stood out at that age particularly sure. that's quite interesting because I mean we were showing a little bit before the interview but it often younger you know players who go to senior international would tend to probably stand out a bit more um, yeah I think you just like expand on that a little bit more just like you know if, if someone was watching what would they have four of you as a player so I, I was like physically wasn't um in in good shape as a kid I was a bit of a bigger kid so um I I never like I don't think I would have said that I wasn't particularly quick wasn't particularly I mean I always felt like I like was decent on the ball and stuff like that as a kid but I, I was never like physically anywhere at the races like wasn't very fit wasn't very healthy and it wasn't till a little bit later when I kind of um probably decided to look after myself a little bit more. You know, as you're a kid, you sort of grow up and start to learn sort of what's what in the world. And you, you, I sort of realised that I didn't want to be, you know, in, in bad shape like I was. And, and that probably helped kickstart my, my hockey journey a little bit. That, that probably didn't come till I was probably about 15 or 16, I think. Yeah. Sure. Um, so if we like move forward from 12, like, you know, when you were 14, um, yeah. describe, you know, what you were doing then with, adult hockey and any representational stuff? Yeah, so 14, I moved, so actually I moved clubs to another local club called Rotherham uh, to start my sort of adult hockey journey. Partly because, so I think the, the Chapel Town teams were, uh, I think, in a slightly higher division at the time. So it was a bit of a big step. And it, just with like the dynamic, it just didn't really, I didn't really fit like into it straight away. Whereas at Rotherham, they had a bit of a... Um, juniors slash adults men's team so some of the dads would play as like adults with like i think it's probably like the under 14 team mixed into that so they were basically finding a way to like introduce youngsters to some adult hockey under the kind of like umbrella and a bit of a protection from some of the older guys especially because like up north you're playing in men's leagues you're gonna <laughs> gonna get bashed around a bit um <laughs> So uh, that that was basically like the the way it kind of worked, and it, it sort of sat, I think, as like a fourth team in the club, maybe like a third team, uh, and it wasn't called like the thirds or the fourths or whatever. It kind of like it was that team, but it was called I can't I can't, I can't tell you what it was now, but um, that that's sort of where I was at fourteen. But then and then again, just sort of playing like minor county stuff for sort of South Yorkshire, and not not really again any 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 more than that at that point, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you started to have your, obviously, you know, your more first experience of adult hockey and, and you, when you're under 15, you did a little bit of JRPC? As yeah, so, okay. yeah, so I think about, I can't remember if I moved back at that time. I don't think I'd quite moved back to Chapel Town yet. So under 15s, did, I had my first experience of like, it, at the time, I think it was JDC and then JAC, which is like the South Yorkshire stuff at the time. And then JRPC would have been like the Yorkshire regional thing. And to be honest with you, you don't have too many fond memories of my, my first experience with JRPC. At this point, you know, it's still still quite unfit, not um, not very sort of on it physically. And just to have, I have like vivid sort of memories of doing fitness testing at JRPC and just hating every every minute of it. Just because just rocking up and just knowing you were going to be bad 
and it and it being you know like long days i wasn't very fit it used to be like especially that year like i have very fond memories of, of stuff like that as i got a bit older but my first experiences of that of like the just the the nerves of of the drive on the way to because mine was up in leeds so it was at wheatwood which is like the leeds uni um set up and just just being nervous the whole way there for this session because i knew it was just gonna be so tough yeah uh, and then with the um so how did you view hockey at that point like in, in your head like was there any aspirations like i want to go higher or was it you know just something you enjoyed yeah, definitely. It's it's tough actually to think to think back. I think probably at that age, didn't I? Didn't expect that I maybe could get that higher. But I I knew I I knew I I have I have vivid memories of 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 really not enjoying not getting into that team because um, I'm playing with a lot of my friends and stuff, and they and then a lot of my friends got in that I'd played with like forever, and that was probably my my first experience of of like not not getting picked for something because I've never like with club hockey and stuff like. You you you're always there in like some capacity. You're always playing in some way or another, and that was probably like the first sort of trial experience that I'd I'd faced really, um, and it I, it definitely gave me the drive to want to get in the next year. So the, like the the change I had between that first year, the under 15s and the under 16s, I remember that was all probably helped kickstart me wanting to get in, into some better shape. Really, I'd say. And then what did you do then exactly to? When you say get back into better shape, you obviously also, it's worth probably mentioning, you were just at your local state school. Yep. It wasn't like you were doing any extra training. Like, So could you just talk about like what you were doing before in terms of training? So like what it looked like and then maybe any extra little bit you added? Yeah, so I mean, so training for me would have just been sort of junior hockey on a weekend and then sort of one night of training in the week. And then when I started playing adult hockey, just one night, one night of training in the week. Um, so my my hockey, I'd only play probably twice a week max. Um, so it, I I I just kind of training and from that one year to the next, just like loads of running basically. Just got into running as a kid and just saw that as because I was I, I I was always quite active, always like out and about with friends. Like we'd always just go and play outside, but I was, you know, I need I needed to do something a bit different. So I I just like do do quite long runs. Um, and that that just helped me sort of get into some into some better shape because obviously hockey at school wasn't a thing. So in a, in a state in a state school, we didn't we didn't have hockey. You know, it was football was the was the sort of sport of choice, as as I'm sure it is in, in sort of most state schools. So hockey, my sort of club hockey was my only out like avenue to play outside. Yeah, sure. No, that makes sense. And then obviously you've done that bit of extra training, maybe taking it yeah. a little more seriously. Um, yeah. and you get into Futures Cup. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you just talk us through through that experience? Yeah, that that I've really really fond memories of that trip. So I think obviously uh, it would have been like the first sort of trip where you sort of travel and stay over with like teammates things like that for me. So um, no, re really fond memories of Futures Cup, especially because the year before didn't even get into the JLPC team. So from one year to not get into. Um, like the Yorkshire team to then get into like the North team was like a, it was like a, just like a really sort of enjoyable experience. And especially playing, you know, you're playing different people. It was, I, I was playing at the time it was held at Cannock. So, you know, you get like everyone piles in from all over the country and, you know, you're playing against guys that you've never seen before. And it's just like, it just feels like a big tournament as a kid. Like, I mean, it's, it's still, it's still a very like, like decent tournament. Um, but at, as a, like at that point in time, it was just like probably the biggest thing that you'd played in and it had a bit more of a tournament feel about it. So there was like, um, there was like guys on the tannoy shouting things around, like the, the loads of sponsors there, like lo just busy, they're like buzzing with people and it just felt like a really cool sort of experience. Yeah. Mm. How, how did you find the standard? Because like you mentioned it was, you know, you, you're suddenly playing all these guys from the South, uh, mid yeah. East, West. It's, you know, it's completely different, isn't it? Especially if you haven't been involved in a top club. Or, yeah, or, yeah, definitely. I think I think well, like typically the North team tends to struggle at that tournament. So that's you know the um, for us it would have been um, I think I can't remember who who I think the the Saxon Tigers as they were at the time, so like the South. I'm not even sure where it would it would it be South the Southeast team. They they were like heavily dominant. 
And then it was kind of um, the West and the Midlands team. And then we were like a little bit below that. So that, that's always kind of like the way that sort of it would typically go. So it, it was like a massive step in standard. You know, you're just playing and it's it's a different kind of environment. But um, yeah, like definitely good to sort of experience some sort of hockey outside the area that I would have, have, have played in typically, yeah. Sure. So then you obviously did this Futures Cup. Um, yeah. When you get into England, how, how did you find that? Like, was it a disappointment or were you sort of, because of the progress you made, were you quite you know, content about like, okay, I've made some really good progress in my year. Yeah. I would say large, largely content with, with how I'd got on. I, I, so it was, I was just sort of buzzing at the time to get into that, to get that far, having not got anywhere near the year before. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're always hopeful. I think you go to a tournament and you, there's like the chance of playing for England. You like, you, you hope you get the email being like, you've got a trial. Um, but like I, in def, definitely I wasn't ready at that point in time. And, and wasn't good enough but again I think it's just those sort of experiences where you like not getting the trial that year or like not getting into JRPC the year before just gives you a little bit or it gave me a little bit more sort of fuel to like push on the next year I think it in, in a way for me I think that probably helped rather than say if I I mean obviously if I got in who's to say that it, it wouldn't have helped as well but for me it definitely helped push me on to, to want to get that yeah Sure. I meant just to help with your progression. You made a couple of changes for your lower sit for you. So just your yeah. club and also your school. Do you want to just talk us through that process? Yeah. So because so going into so I was um, so I'm like a, an age trapped player. So I would have been so I'm an October birthday. So my sort of under seventeen year is was year eleven. So that that year when I was in year eleven at school, uh, Sheffield Hallam who were like pushing for promotion into the Prem at that time. Uh, probably like they, well, they were the best team in the, in the North conference. So the best league in the North like, division um, invited me down to, to train once a week with, the, with those guys. So, which was good. Cause I was back, so I was back at Chapel Town now playing men's hockey in like a, it was like a decent ish league in one of the, in one of the Northern leagues. I think I can't remember might've been North Prem or North one, like beneath the conferences. Um, I actually can't remember how it's what we sort of got ended up in that situation. But I think I might have played against one of the Sheffield teams and they didn't they'd invited me to come down and train. Um I think they kind of did it with with a few clubs. They'd sort of like go around the clubs like in the area like and then see if there's any guys that would come in and train a bit. And that was really good. So I was I was saying to you before, at that point in time there was um Phil Roper was at Sheffield Hallam, Brendan Creed, David Goodfield, all guys that are in the, the senior team now when they were at university. Uh, Liam Anser was there the following year. So like some really some really like talented young up and coming players at that time were at Sheffield. They 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 I think that year they won the books competition. So they're like the best best uni in the in the country at that point. So I remember going there being way out of my depth, but it being like a really cool environment. Like the guys were really welcoming. Um gave me loads of tips, loads of help. And it also made the transition easier for the next year. So that was year 11. Then I actually moved to Sheffield in my upper sixth year uh, to play club hockey when they got promoted to the Prem. So I would have been sort of 16, 17 in lower sixth, um, playing Premier League hockey. And that year is the year that I got into the under 18s, um, probably largely due to that sort of exposure, being able to play in the in the best league as a really young player at that time was just invaluable even though I was probably only getting I'd say 20 minutes 25 minutes a game like I, I, I wouldn't play massive amounts but being in a training environment like that and playing that standard definitely gave me the edge as a under 18 yeah sure and like how did you what was your mentality like as a young player going into that environment you know it's a massive step up to go into national yeah. time and you're playing with you know, guys who are a bit older than you, not so old that you know it's, but you know it's a massive age yeah. gap. They're a little bit older uni students. How did you, you know, how what was your mentality like? In- I think just to try and sort of sponge up as much as I can. I think you know th- these guys are all in their own right, like up, like really good up and coming, like the next sort of big thing players. So I was just trying to learn as much as I could, take as many tips on board, um, and also just enjoy it. Like they were a great group of guys to to have grown up with and. And to experience with, like, they were 
yeah, just just really just try and sort of take it all in. And I'd say at that point, you know, the Premier League was was more difficult than the under eighteen stuff. The it, it was different. It's quite hard to compare. But I would say like going and playing a, a Premier League game against one of the top sides in the league was harder than it was playing a junior international game. So that had obviously set me up well to try and to help me get into the to the England team. Yeah. Sure. So and during, how, how was Futures Cup under 18? Yeah, Futures Cup under 18 is probably like one of my favourite tournaments as a kid. So we um we actually, so was, we finished third and that was the first time and I couldn't tell you exactly how many years it was, but it was basically like a bit of a record that there was the first time that the boys hadn't finished last in in um in the Futures Cup. So that was that was quite good. We beat um we beat the Saxon Tigers who had dominated it for ages in the third, fourth playoff to get third. And <laughs> and that was good. And actually, like that Futures Cup was the first time I felt as though I was like someone in a team that was kind of like there to help us sort of do better. So I kind of had a bit more of a bigger role in the in a team. Like I say like the first Futures Cup. I was just kind of like a part of the team, if that was just like another player in the team. Whereas that tournament, I actually felt as though like that was like a big step up for me and a bit of a confidence boost going forward. Um, and I think just probably just given that I was playing Premier League hockey, just I, I probably had a bit more confidence in my own ability going into that tournament, knowing that it's not going to be as hard as what I'm doing on on a weekend and stuff. Yeah, it must have been a massive confidence boost because it. Yeah. You know, yeah. before when you went to Futures, it was almost like a, a massive step up. And now it's almost like a, a step down a little bit. It's yeah. much more comfortable with. Um, and then do you want to just talk us through the process of getting selected for England 18s and your and like the trial day as well? Yeah. So for, for England under 18s, it's it's like a it's a it's a big trial. So we were at Lillyshaw still. I mean, I think I think the under 18s still still go to Lillyshaw. Um but, but quite a few guys get taken forward from Futures Cup I think it, I don't know it would be something like 40 or 50 and um, yeah just I think you, it, it helped in a weird way being one of the very few people from the north there because it's you, you like don't there's typically very few if any actually get through to the trial from the, the north team it's usually just, just from just the way it is I guess um, tends to be dominated by the guys in the south um, so it's almost like it was probably probably helped me out a little bit because they're like you're a bit of a sort of unknown entity or something like especially me as someone who's who not come through the England system not played any junior international hockey at that point it's like someone who's probably come in that they've not seen before so it might have helped them sort of have a look at me because I imagine it's probably quite a tough job you know you get 50 guys turn up and you've only got a few trial days you need to whittle the squad down and you want to see everyone um, but it was tough you know that's like the there was a lot of like fitness testing, a lot of like, I assume like they just wanted to like quantify things, I guess, and, and stuff like that. So like under 18s trials were tough. It was like, it is a little bit stressful. I think in hindsight, you know, you're a little bit sort of anxious about it as a kid and you want to sort of impress and stand out and get picked. But um, yeah, I, I had a great time England under 18s. Um, again, I'd say like, wasn't a big player in the team. Like I, I, I think I went to all the games that year. So I managed to get picked for the tournaments, but in in the team, you know, not not like a probably if I'm honest, not a standout player, but again, like another another big learning curve, definitely. And like a massive step forward from um, you know only going to futures a couple of years previously to actually you know you're one of the best eighteen effectively. And yeah. Do any, do any like games particularly stand out from your um, junior international under 18s I'd say. I think just the the first game always just is we played Germany out in uh in in Mannheim, and just just as like my first experience of international hockey, like that was that obviously stands out. Um, we, there wasn't like a major tournament that year, so you know sometimes you just you get you either fall lucky or you don't with under eighteen. So you either get a Euros or you get like a Four Nations. So we had we had a, we had a Four Nations because it wasn't a, a year for a Euros, um, and yeah, like I just just kind of there's there's nothing I'd say no no one game stands out in particular but just just really enjoyable like you know as a having especially having not done England and probably not being used to it as some of the other guys might have done I think just traveling you know around Europe to play hockey was was quite a cool experience at that at that age 
especially being a guy from um, from the, like the north who maybe hadn't, you know, none of the guys that, or not many of the guys that I knew up there would have had that opportunity. It uh, was, uh, yeah. 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 Um, what was the standard like? How did you find, you know, the jump to under 18 international hockey? How did that compare to, I suppose, futures, first of all, and then how did it compare to Prem? Yeah, a big, a big step up uh, from futures. Um, I think just just the standard is it was just was just far higher, um, and 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 it was diff- It's difficult to describe sort of the difference between like junior international hockey and prem hockey at the time. Just trying to think back, I, I'd say like the like the the skill standard of like players and stuff was was very high in junior international hockey, but like the the game sort of now so an understanding of like a game was, was far lower. So you you'd play prem on a weekend against guys that have been playing Premier League hockey for 10 years and they and you just can't get near them because they they just know what's what if that makes sense whereas like junior hockey is just a bit more sort of disorganized and like just a bit more like I don't I don't really know how to describe it but a bit more random and not as structured because it's you know guys have been thrown together not too much time to sort of plan the team framework or whatever and and obviously, you don't have that long as a group together. So, like, the, there'll be some real standout players in junior international games, and they'll be that'll be really tough. But a Premier League game, I'd still say, was 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 a lot harder. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it's quite a good description of the yeah, like you know, like a skill set in junior international hockey, but then maybe a bit more game now. So, yeah, you know, understanding in, in the national fam, and also interesting to see the big step up from futures to you know, actually playing junior international hockey. Um, so obviously by this point, you're starting to, you know, it's a lot more hockey than, than you were doing two years ago. And you're suddenly traveling to Europe to play hockey, doing all these camps. You're, you're playing Prem, which, especially if you're Sheffield, you know, it's a lot of traveling <laughs> at the weekend if you're away. Um, how did you balance it with your schoolwork? Yeah, so I think, well, ever I was um, at state school, so I was saying before I, I was fortunate enough um to go to a private school for sixth form uh on, on a bit of a hockey scholarship uh in workshop um but it so like that they were really good so before that when i was under 17 i was in year year 11 because hockey you know school was sort of nine till three and hockey didn't happen at school there, there was plenty of time to and, and, and most of the camps would happen in uh, school holidays there, there was never really an issue when I was at state school. It kind of all just just fit in quite nicely. Obviously, when you go to to private school, there's a few more sort of pulling pulling around with different things. So you want to you want to play for the school. You've got club hockey as well, and then you've got your international stuff on top. So so low low sixth was like a bit of a shock to the system. There was a lot going on, um, but the school were were really good with sort of understanding all the commitments. So they they sort of knew that. I, you know, I came to the school having moved to Sheffield already to play my hockey. So first term at school when it was rugby, I'd get let, I didn't have to play rugby for school. I'd get let out on a weekend to go and play my Premier League game. And then there was always, the, it was just on the premise that if there was a club, if there was a school fixture, that would take priority because I was there to play hockey for the school. But very rare did that happen. You know, school games would often be Saturdays and Premier League was always played on a Sunday. At that point, so it just would would work out that um, I, I'd not really have to miss any club hockey, and I could play my school hockey as well. And also, that they, they were just like really sort of understanding, accommodating that you know, like tutors and things like that. At the school would help me out planning, you know, what my sort of A levels would look like playing like junior international hockey and being away and things like that. So um, yeah, yeah, re- really fortunate at that point just to have sort of a setup that allowed me to sort of maximise all aspects of hockey and life and school and study and everything else. And how did you like balance it socially as well? Did you, was that a bit more difficult in lower sixth? Um, I don't think so. I think from memory, I don't, I don't feel like I missed out. Like the, I think as, as a sports, you know, playing sport, you're always going to miss out on things. Like you're going to have a game when there's something on or you're going to not be able to commit to all the social things that you want to do. But that's, I think part of the sacrifice that you just learn growing up that, you know, your social sometimes is that sort of sport that goes on. And 
Um, th- there's definitely times where I've, say, not been able to go to something because I've got some hockey on. But I've always felt, you know, sort of worth the sacrifice. And it's, it's definitely one of those things that you only get better at with experience, just being able to balance balance your social life and your hockey life. And it's probably still something that, you know, you work on, I'm still working on today, I'm sure everyone is. You know, there's always certain bits now where I'd love to go and do something and see some friends I've not seen in a while, but I know I can't because of because of hockey. But that's part of the sacrifice that you take and 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 you're always learning and always sort of getting it trying to get it right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think mean, that's some you know an important point. But it's that, you know, constant evolution and you know, you might not get it perfect when you're 16, 17, but no, you know, you keep learning forward going as well. Um, I mentioned looking back at your um, whole journey, is there any you know, like one big tip which stands out for a, a junior performance player? So for me, it would be just making sure that you're always being pushed and always being stretched. So my, my journey in hockey, you know, I didn't stay at the same club for the same sort of bit. I've sort of bounced around as it sort of fitted right just to get that extra bit of stretch and bit of push. So, you know, moving, I moved from my sort of family club to another club to get my first bit of adult hockey just because it it kind of was that bit of extra push that I needed and then moved back to that club to to play adult hockey a bit more pro- like in, in a bit of a higher league just again to get that bit of stretch and then like I was saying with the Sheffield stuff you know going to a to a team playing Premier League hockey or trying to be a Premier League hockey team as like a 16 year old and training once a week again way out of my depth and just you're just able to learn and take in a bit more than you you would be able to otherwise um i'd say that's just the big takeaway for me is is always always try and be um a little fish in a big pond i think i think if you if you're ever at the point where as a kid especially you're you're a big fish i think you're probably not learning enough or not in an environment where you can you can take enough in and learn and learn from from other people i i really i i think it maybe sort of suits me as a person that that way anyway like i always much prefer being in an environment where there's like loads of great players because i feel like i can learn off other people it's part of the reason why i also came to surbiton when i moved down south is you know they'd won the league three seasons in a row before i came down i was like you know i want to i want to be like a you know i'm not going to be a like the big player in this team i want to like be a like a contributing player that can learn off all these guys that are kind of that way that that's that sort of setup so that's that's would probably be my my sort of like significant takeaway yeah yeah no thanks that tip i think it's you can really see it um throughout your journey you know how you've you know really progressed as you've um you know gone through the ages um, and even post 18 as well it sort of you know it takes quite a lot of bravery to to make those decisions and you know as you sort of said be that small fish in a big yeah. pond rather than the big fish uh, so yeah cool thank you for your time no uh, problem great to have you on board as a mentor <laughs>